Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I am so excited to be sharing with you my sixth update for the Pan Those Eyeshadows Project Pan. This project, man, it's so, so fun. I have an absolute blast with this project. I think you already are well aware of that because this is the project that I think just makes me so, so inspired to play with my eyeshadow collection. And it really keeps me from actually like craving new eyeshadows for my collection as well because it's really insightful to know how long it takes to hit pan on eyeshadows. This project pan is one that was heavily inspired by my friend Alexi. She did do her own variation of pan those eyeshadows. She's the one who started this entire thing and had a little bit of a different take on it than how I've interpreted it, but this project is so fun because you can completely personalize it to your own collection, your own consumption, your own way of wanting to even randomize or choose the eyeshadows to focus on. And I have just been having so much fun since I started doing this project again for 2021. I did it back in 2019 and 2020. And then I took a short break and I really did miss it. And I'm so happy to be back. We're already six months into this project and it feels like no time has passed at all because I've just been really, really loving rotating through my eyeshadow collection. So before we hop on into today's update, I do just wanna share with you all of the eyeshadows that I have been working on. And then, yeah, we're gonna talk about the usage, some looks that I've created over the past month, and spoiler alert, I will be rolling something new into this project, which I'm super, super excited about. So let's get on into it. So here we have all five shades that I was focusing on over this past month. It's a really interesting kind of summer meets autumn color story. You know, I've got those hints of warmth, those deeper tones, and then it's primarily mattes, which I hadn't really realized until like partway through the month. I was like, oh my gosh, I only have one shimmer to be focusing on. And yeah, it has proven to be quite an interesting color story, although I have had quite a bit of fun with it. So let's talk about each one of these individual shades, kicking it off with this one right here. This is a depotted red shade that I had from the ColourPop Yes Please palette. I actually have all of my ColourPop eyeshadows depot that I've depotted in this um, palette right here. And the shade is called Spoiled, and as I said, it was from the Yes Please palette. It's a almost true red shade with like a tiny bit of like a terracotta burnt kind of undertone. And the pans in the ColourPop Press Powder Shadow palettes are unreal. That was a freaking tongue twister. I'm surprised I got through that. But yes, in, in any case, they are so deep that it was so hard for me to get any sort of like momentum going on this shadow. I've actually had this one in the project since the introduction back in March but I'm really thrilled to share with you today. I have finally, finally hit pan on it. So prior to today's update, I had used it 22 times in this project. So up until update five, I had used it 22 times. I've now reached for it an additional eight times this past month. I had set myself a goal to reach for it five times in the past month, but I, I needed to surpass that in order to actually hit pan on it. So I'm happy I was finally able to hit pan on it. It took took eight more uses and wow. But you can see the pan is actually pretty significant. So I must have had a really fine thin layer just happening almost right at the pan. And I was like expanding that like top layer for a while because this is the pan that showed up on the day that I hit pan on it. I think that was a few days ago at this point or maybe even a week ago at this point. And all of a sudden it was just like a ton of freaking pans. So I had been working away, working away and uncovering until there was this tiny, tiny, tiny thin layer over a pretty expansive pan and it finally showed its face. 30 uses is pretty significant for me. That's quite a large number of uses on an eyeshadow for me personally. I've heard some people use this maybe 60, 70 times, whatever, in order to hit pan. I tend to be pretty heavy handed when it comes to eyeshadow and I work in layers and layers and layers and I tend to build my eyeshadows even though I even start out kind of heavy handed. So yeah, it took me 30 uses. I had already had a little bit of progress on it prior to it being in this project, but nothing that was super significant. So this was a freaking task and I'm so happy it finally happened. I'm so happy it finally happened. My goodness, my goodness, it was, that was a time. So the next eyeshadow that I have here, let's stop talking about spoiled. Let's give it no more airtime after the last 
six months of focusing on it. So this next shade right here is this gorgeous kind of earthy, deep, herby kind of green shade. It is a matte as well, and it comes from my Oma Beauty Black Magic palette. This is the Black Magic Allure. I did get this in PR from Look Fantastic, and I had used this only three times in my previous update. I had only had it in the project for one month at that point, and now I've completed my second month with this eyeshadow in the project. I used it an additional six times, which is great. I actually doubled the usage that I had done in the first month. So I've used it a total of nine times at this rate and unfortunately no pan. I wouldn't imagine after only nine uses I'd have pan on this, but I am starting to see, you know, a little bit of a dip happening in there. I'm feeling much more motivated than I was in the first month to reach for this shade. It does feel perfectly seasonal and I've had enough time away from Untamed, which was the eyeshadow that I ended up replacing uh, this one for and it was virtually the same eyeshadow so I'm feeling like that's a distant memory enough that I'm enjoying this one again I am wearing it today in my outer corner and kind of like smudged a little bit on the outer portion of my lash line as well as on the outer corner of my lower lash line and I really like it it's such a beautiful green that I feel like can ground a lot of different looks you can wear it with like blues and bronzes and greens and yellows and tons and tons of shades and I'm really excited to keep exploring it and playing with it over the coming months as well as this whole palette in general because it is such a stunning stunning eyeshadow palette. I'm truly not sure if I'll be able to hit pan on it by my next update but that's okay. I'm gonna keep reaching for it and just enjoying using the palette as a whole. And then the next shade I have here is this like deep fuchsia purple kind of shade. Again, it's a matte. They're all freaking mattes except for this blue at the bottom. Uh, but in any case, this is a, again, an eyeshadow from a Depotted ColourPop palette. It came from the Pretty Much palette and I don't have it in here because I've actually moved it into this little ColourPop um, quad that I have and I've put it alongside a few other eyeshadows one other depotted ColourPop shade, but two other just single pans that I had in my collection. And I gotta get back to the point, this eyeshadow is called Cool It, which is from that pretty much palette. It was a little like six pan palette that ColourPop had. But this is the context that I have it in now. I love this little color story. How pretty is that? So this one is by Cleona. This is Cinnabar. And then I have another ColourPop eyeshadow right here. I believe that one is Howlin' or Prowlin'? I don't own both, but whichever one of the two I own. And then this one's Cool It right here. And then down here is a shade from the ColourPop and Raw Beauty Christie palette. And why was that so awkward? Why was I like this to point? So I had used it only three times in the first month that I had it in this project. So I rolled it in in the same update that I had rolled in Lush and um, three times in that first month. So not great progress. And even worse progress over this past month, I only used it two additional times. And that's because it is a color that's a little bit um, disconnected from the, from the remaining shades that I have in here, but I'm just generally not super drawn to purples. So there is, you know, a little bit of wear happening on this pan. However, nothing too notable at this point. I'm gonna keep working on it, but five uses, I wouldn't imagine that I would make a ton of progress on it within the five uses. So it is what it is, I'm gonna keep working on it, but I will expect that it's gonna take at least 30 uses, just like the spoiled shade did, and maybe even more, maybe even more, we'll see. But I got a long way to go with that one, don't I? And then this next shade right here is one that I rolled in actually just in my last update. It comes from the Juvia's Place, the Magic Mini palette. One of my favorite palettes in my collection, actually. I really, really enjoy this formula and this color story I find extremely inspiring. And the shade that I pulled in in my last update was called Zakia, Zakaya. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that word. Um, but I will have it on the screen so you can kind of see how that's spelled. But it is a really beautiful terracotta orange shade, much more on the orange side than any sort of like brown or red kind of undertone. It truly is like a deep burnt orange. And surprisingly, I reached for it more than I would have expected because I was feeling a little bit over orange shades. I had just rolled an orange shade out in my last update but I had used it a total of five times this past month. So 
not amazing usage by any means, but five times I think is decent. That's kind of on par with where I tend to be. I usually sit anywhere between like five and 10 uses in a month. And I don't really go out that much. Like I am pretty much a homebody and I work from home. So I'm not really like wearing makeup to the extreme that I was back in like 2019. So five uses I think is pretty good. But in any case, that is what it's looking like now. A little bit of wear, nothing super apparent or super significant as you would expect with only five uses. I'm gonna continue to reach for this. This may be one of those shades that I actually roll out when I reach that 15 use threshold. I've set myself that as a like minimum number of uses in order to move on to a new shade. I'll reevaluate once I get to that point. I don't like to expect that I'm going to reach only 15 uses on eyeshadow, but I like to kind of keep it in the back of my mind depending on the formula. So these are super pigmented, really, really hardly pressed as well. So I imagine in 15 uses, I really won't see a ton of wear on it. So that's kind of why I'm anticipating I will only use it 15 times, but we'll see. We will see. That is for sure. And then lastly, I have the shade that I've been pointing to quite a bit throughout today's video, but this is a beautiful minty light teal kind of shadow. It is a metallic. It's kind of like a chunky sort of formula. And it comes from this palette right here, which is the Melt Cosmetic Smoke Sessions. Again, one of my favorites in my collection. So I'm really happy that I'm actually working on these two palettes in tandem because I did buy these back in 2020 around the same time, um, probably like last April or May. And they're both absolute favorites in my collection, not just because they are like kind of newer to my collection than other sh like shadow palettes, but just in general, these color stories are super inspiring and super exciting to me. So the shade I'm working on is called Blue Dream. I rolled it in last update only, so I've only had it in this project for one month. However, I've reached for it six times, which is great. Today I'm wearing it on this inner portion of my lid and I'm seeing a really big dent in it because it is that chunky metallic kind of formula. So I do need to kind of work in layers and I typically use my finger to apply it with a glitter glue underneath just so that I can get that true impact on the lids. And one time I did wear it as a nail polish. So one of those six uses, I, I wore it all over all 10 of my nails and that's quite a large surface area and I actually did like two coats. So I did one coat um, trying to cover as opaque as I could, put on a top coat and then I kind of looked at it a little bit more directly in the light and I realized it didn't have the coverage I had expected or that I was hoping for. So I did another coat and then put another coat of top coat on it and it gave me the impact I really wanted. But again, it's just given that like more dry metallic, like flaky kind of formula. So I kind of technically did two manicures with it. So six uses, I foresee myself being able to actually hit pan on this in this next month because I did hit pan on Granddaddy in my last update and you can see the dip in Granddaddy is kind of getting comparable to what you can see in Blue Dream. I know Blue Dream is a little bit harder to see just given the type of shade that it is. It doesn't offer as much of like a shadow when you see the dip, but it's approaching that kind of depth. So I'm feeling really positive about this. I love this palette. I adore reaching for this palette. And although I said it's kind of like a drier, flakier metallic formula, I love the way that it looks on the lids once I have really worked it into the lids and, and layered it and kind of built it up. It really does wow me. It's so stunning and it's been a treat. It has really been a treat to reach for this palette. So. Those are the five shades that are currently in this, this project pan. Finally, Spoiled is leaving, which is a good day. It really is a good day that it's finally, finally getting out of here. We're gonna be rolling something new into this project pan. And after last update, when I realized that I had rolled for something that I actually didn't still have in my collection, I took some serious time to go through my eyeshadow palette collection with my Google spreadsheet and ensure that everything was properly accounted for and that I didn't have anything that I have already decluttered or have already hit pan on in my spreadsheet. And then I ended up moving it over to the Tiny Decisions app because I could just, you can just copy and paste all of the lines and paste them into Tiny Decisions 
and just import the entire list. So what I did was just move everything over to here so that I can just kind of streamline this process a little bit more of pulling for my eyeshadows. Instead of pulling a number, then going back and reevaluating, blah, blah, blah. We're just gonna roll for it. So there's over 300 eyeshadows in this spreadsheet. It is pure chaos on that wheel. Like you can't see what any of those say, but let's just give it a shot. So the next eyeshadow I'm gonna be rolling into this project in place of spoiled is from the subculture palette. It is the shade, shade edge. I don't know if you can see that, but edge, I believe, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's a mustard shade. So actually I'm just gonna grab it. So this is subculture. I've got her right here and edge. Yes, it is the mustard shade. It's this one right here. So I'm just going to go wash off this color story and then I'm gonna share with you my new color story with edge and uh, talk about some of my thoughts on this color, but I was just too excited. I couldn't wait to share with you what it is. Okay, that was a little bit out of order of how I usually do it, but here is the new color story. We're definitely keeping within that like late summer, early autumn kind of color story with the inclusion of a brand new matte mustard, another matte. We didn't get a shimmer yet, but Edge is a beautiful, beautiful shade. It is a rich, kind of earthy, kind of dirty mustard shade that I'm all about and I can't wait to play with it. I do have a little bit of a dip happening in it, although nothing too notable, but this formula is quite dusty, quite loose, and I do foresee myself being able to hit pan on it with ease, not only given the formula, but the type of shade that it is. I like to wear these kinds of colors a lot and in a large quantity as well. So I'm really excited for it. I am definitely happy about the change in the color story, given the addition of a mustard. I do think that it actually pairs really well with what I've already got here. And I foresee the next month actually being something where I can hit pan on at least one eyeshadow. I think the Blue Dream shade should be rolling out of this project by my next update. And that makes me excited, although I still love that palette so, so much, but that is everything. Let me know what you would do with this color story. Let me know some ideas. How would you place these? How would you wear these? But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.